Hi there. My name is Jessica Rothacker and I am chef and co-owner at Heirloom Cafe in Athens, Georgia. I am proud to be one of the class of 2020 Georgia Grown Executive Chefs and I am so happy to be here to do a demo for you today. Um, we are going to make caponata. You may be thinking caponata in October, maybe a little off season, but my thoughts are that eggplant and peppers um, go way into October. It's, it's, we're really lucky to have that in Georgia. So why not? I mean, it makes you think about summer. It makes you feel a little nostalgic, but it also offers something bright and delicious to balance out sometimes dreary days. So let's get started. We're going to start with a pretty heavy saute pan and we will put our heat to a medium high heat. Then we're gonna take Georgia Olive Farms olive oil from Lakeland, Georgia. It is one of our Georgia grown products. And we'll take about three tablespoons of olive oil and drizzle it into the pan. Don't be afraid to be generous with that. It's really delicious olive oil. We'll drizzle some on at the end and um, it'll just make the flavor all that much better. So we'll wait until the heat gets nice and even and the oil is shimmering a little bit in the pan. In the meantime, I wanna tell you a little bit about this recipe and what it means to me. So in 2008, I was lucky enough to get to do a stage in, um, in Italy with a wonderful chef named Salvatore Toscano. He has a, um, an Osteria in the town of Greve in Chianti, which is obviously in Chianti, and um, in the Tuscan, Tuscany region of Italy. So I spent about six weeks there. I would go in every day and learn from him and get to cook a little with him. And then on the weekends, I would get to explore other parts of Italy. Um, now you may be thinking, Sicily is really where Caponata comes from. Why is this chef in Tuscany doing it? And I will tell you that the reason why is that Salvatore's grandmother was from Sicily, and um, while most of the dishes that he made were hyper-local to that area, he wanted to honor his grandmother by making her caponata the way that she made it um, in his Austria. So he taught me this recipe, and I'm very happy to get to share it with you today. So to start out, we're going to take um, two onions that have been julienned or sliced thinly. Um, what you'll do for that is you will cut the onion in half across the, the root and the stem part, and then take um, top off each of those ends, and then peel that onion, and then slice all the way across the onion until you have nice thin slices. And um, let's, let's go ahead and put those in the pan. So we've got our onion. We're gonna saute in the pan. And we're going to go ahead and add some garlic in with that. We've got two cloves of thinly sliced garlic that we'll be using. So once we get a little bit of a sizzle going on here, we will do a little bit more. So we're gonna stir that and we're gonna cook for about um, one or two minutes just until it starts to, to simmer in here a little bit and then we'll add a couple more things. So to tell you a little bit about what I do, um, my restaurant, like I said, is in Athens, Georgia, and it is a neighborhood restaurant in the Boulevard neighborhood. Um, our mission is creating community, celebrating local farmers, and telling a story around food um, and with food and drink. And um, we've been open since about 2011, well, since 2011. Um, it is a family business. My dad and I are, um, co-owners and we um, have, are lucky enough to have a really great patio right now. We are um, doing outside seating only during the pandemic. So as you know, we're in a pandemic right now, which is why we are at the Georgia State Fair for this demo. Um, I'm gonna interrupt my story for a moment to add in about a cup and a half of large diced red bell pepper or any other sweet pepper that you might find at the farmer's market and then about a bunch worth of celery, or if you don't have it by the bunch, about four, stock, four or five stalks of celery, we're gonna have that lengthwise down the middle and then cut it into about a quarter inch dice. So we're gonna saute that all together and let this cook down. Yeah, 
so we um, we try to work with local farmers as much as possible. And um, during the season, we work with a variety of farmers. We work with Collective Harvest, which is this really great organization um, in Athens that lets there be a collaborative of local farmers all working together to supply both restaurants and the general public. All right, you may have noticed in that last scene that my pan was a little too small, so I switched it to a little bit larger pan here. Um, I have never made this recipe in my home kitchen before. I've only ever made it in a restaurant setting, and so I wasn't sure about what size pan to use, and sometimes you choose wrong. Um, so I've got it in a little bit larger pan. We have been simmering here for about five minutes. We're starting to see some liquids come off of the vegetables. Um, I will show you it's starting to get a little translucent with the onions. It's cooked down quite a bit. And we are going to add in the rest of our ingredients now. So we've got eggplant, which is the star of the show here. It is a very popular vegetable in Sicily. I will say that often people don't know what to do with eggplant and here in the States. They um, may like a, an eggplant parmesan or um, a variety of other kind of Italian inspired things, but they don't necessarily know what to do with it when you see it at the store and um, or in the farmer's market. And I think that it's a really nice vegetable. It um, can be a little off-putting with texture sometimes, but the flavor um, just like brings out all of the wonderful elements of the summertime and now obviously the fall. Um, we're going to let this cook down just a little bit um, and then we're going to add in the rest of our ingredients here. So this was one globe eggplant, one large globe eggplant or Italian eggplant. They're the ones that you think of most often when you think of eggplant. Um, kind of have a blackish purple skin, what you can find in the grocery store. Um, and often you can find it with farmers as well. You could also, if you are shopping at a farmer's market and all that they have is the really beautiful, long, thin, um, Japanese eggplants, you can use those, and I would use about five of them to equal the amount that we have here. Um, you will want to cut those into about a third of an inch cubes is what we're looking at here. So we are going to just let this simmer for a moment. Um, Another fun thing to do with that plant is smoke it. If you have a smoker, it comes out, it really like mellows out the flavor and it just makes it very savory and delicious. So I recommend smoking eggplant as well. All right, next up we're gonna add in some capers. We've got about a third of a cup of capers that we have drained the liquid off of and rinsed. Um, gonna add those into the pan. Then we've got about two thirds cup each, um, black Kalamata olives and then green olives. And then we have rough chopped them so that they have some texture still to them, but they are not huge giant olives in your cup nut. So we'll add those both in. Then we are going to add in a little bit of tomato paste, um, about a tablespoon and a half or like four and a half teaspoons if you prefer to go that way. Um, I really love the squeezy tubes of tomato paste because I feel like as a home cook that I very rarely will go through one of those whole cans in one sitting and so I like the squeezy tubes because you can keep it for later. So I'm going to go ahead and put the tomato paste in and then we will add in two tablespoons of sugar. So the sugar counteracts the acidity and the vinegar that we're about to add and it just balances out everything really, really nicely. So we'll add sugar. And then we've got two tablespoons of the Mar Ray Foods Sweet and Savory Red Wine Vinegar. This is a Georgia product. You um, can find it on their website, but they also sell at several of the Atlanta-based um, farmer's markets. So it's a really lovely infused vinegar. It's got date and other savory and sweet things in it. So it's a nice addition to this, very Mediterranean. And then finally, we're going to add about a third of a cup of water. And we want to add this just to give it a little extra liquid so we can bring it up to a boil and then let it simmer for about 20 minutes. So we're gonna stir this all together. Mm, it's really starting to smell so good in here. 
So I would say that our roots of the restaurant and um, at Heirloom Cafe are more based in Southern cuisine. Um, we like to take kind of a little bit fresher takes on some of the foods rather than heavier, um, like more rib sticking kinds of versions of Southern food. But I have a lot of basis of my own knowledge in Mediterranean and Spanish and Italian style food. And I love like Provençal, French Southern, French food. Um, I just love those flavors. And so you'll find a lot of hints of that in my cooking, which um, you can see on the menu in the coming months. So this is really going now. It's come up, it's boiling in the pan somewhat. And just to show you what it looks like, I will give you a little look. So we are going to turn it down to low and then we're gonna let it simmer for about 20 minutes. We're gonna put the cover on and I'll be back. All right, now it's been simmering for about 20 minutes and it's time to take a look. Let's see. Let's go. Oh, this looks so good. Can you smell that? Oh, I guess you can't smell that. I wish you could smell it. It smells so good. We're gonna give it a stir. Oh, luscious. It's one of my favorite smells. Oh, but there's one more thing we need to do before we take it off the heat. So I've got about half a bunch of basil, the leaves all taken off of the stems, and we haven't chopped them up because we want to tear them here. So tearing them helps get the flavor all out of them. It's all exciting. It um, leaves the leaves more intact, but also helps to not bruise them by cutting them with a knife. So we'll just tear them up into little pieces about maybe an inch wide. So this is a great dish to do as an appetizer, but you could also do it as part of a, um, a main course of a meal. You could do it as a side dish or an accompaniment to something like a nice pork chop or piece of fish that's grilled. Um, and then you could also do it as part of a pasta dish, which is probably what I'm gonna do for dinner tonight. So you could get some nice um, like cavatappi a shorter noodle, or if you prefer something longer, like a bucatini or a, um, something closer to a spaghetti or a fettuccine, like a long, thin noodle, you could do that. Um, and then I'm gonna put in some mozzarella, some cubed up mozzarella, um, right at the end. So I'll serve this with the pasta warm and then chop up that mozzarella and toss it in right before I serve it. Um, but you can do however you like, but it's, um, it's a pretty versatile dish. And that basil is just gonna give it such a nice brightness to it. So we're stirring that in. We're gonna cut the heat and we are going to come on over here and add it to our casserole dish. So a nice way to serve this as an appetizer is to put it in a nice thin layer in a casserole dish and let it um, come to room temperature. Um, oops, I made a little mess, sorry about that. So we'll let it come to room temperature and then you can serve it on crostini or as part of a cheese board or an antipasto board. Um, if you're tailgating this fall, I know in Athens technically we're not supposed to tailgate but it's still something that's gonna be happening for football. Likely people will be gathering in homes and interested in watching um, some football so this is a good appetizer to share in those situations in your socially distanced hangouts or like I said you can put it on pasta or use it as accompaniment to fish or, or any other protein um, and yeah so what is traditionally done though is taking a little bit of crusty bread and you put it on there and you take a bite so um, as Salvatore would say mangiando mangiando and until next time thank you so much bye